Welcome to the Barrow and welcome to this 140 septum delve mission of Call to Arms. So today we are doing Realm of the Dead, Delve Mode Scenario 4 in the quest book, um, which will have us just taking objectives and moving up from here I'll have to take objectives and kill adversaries. I'm taking the Dragonborn Champion of Skyrim and the Imperial Mage Spell Sword. Uh, the Dragonborn has an Iron Sword, some throwing knives, and fur armor, and the Imperial Mage has uh, Turn Lesser Undead, an Iron Dagger, Flames, and an Imperial Light Armor. Um, I wanted to do the throwing knives just because I think they're interesting, and um, I want the Dragonborn to kind of sneak in, and I was kind of low on points. Because I wanted to keep the points similar to what I had. These are the only adversaries I have access to at the moment. Which is the Draugr Overlord, three Draugrs, and three Skeletons. And the rules say that you have to have like an extra 25 Septims limit for uh, your adversaries. For every full hundred um, septums you take, and since I'm at 140, I thought about going to like 164, but that would have left these guys a little underpowered, so I left it, I, I had to whittle it down. Um, so Dragonborn's going to be sneaking in, um, get in close, maybe throw a knife from stealth, and whapping things whenever they get close. For armor, not that great, but hey, uh, them's the works. Turn Lesser Undead, uh, the Imperial Mage, I kind of wanted to be a little utility. So Turn Lesser Undead is going to make things flee. Um, except the Overlord, who's right there in the front. That's unfortunate. Um, Iron Dagger, because it's one septum. And I needed something. Uh, flames and Imperial Light Armor, because that's good defense. Yeah, so we are going to be charging our way up the field to try to take these objectives. So we have access to three oaths. Treasure Hunter, I will search all the treasure tokens before the game ends. Wipe them out, the game will end with no adversary models in play. Or strike from the shadows, my party will remove an enemy model using a sneak attack. Um, I am not going to take wipe them out because I don't think I'm going to be able to take out all the adversaries. Um, we have eight turns, but things will continually spawn. Um, getting the Overlord out early would be a great boon because <laughs> um, he'll be gone for good. Um, so Treasure Hunter I will take because I think that's doable with two models. And Strike from the Shadows. Uh, we need our Dragonborn to, uh, to get a sneak hit in. Hopefully those daggers will do something good against Draugr or Skeletons. Um, for 100 to 250 points, we need at least 10, at least 10 points to win. And uh, if we get that, then that's good. So we have X, we have potential to get four victory points as well as one VP for each enemy model destroyed, um, as well as hopefully some strategic objectives that might give us some goodies. All right, so let's get on to the beginning of turn one of the adventurers delving into the realm of the dead. So we are playing on a wilderness map, so we will need to roll off to see whether we have um, some special effects happening. So let's go ahead and roll. Um, well, there is apparently a blizzard. Great. On an exclamation mark or an X, we have less than light of sight. Uh, that is normal line of sight, so we can see normally. At the beginning of the game, we also need to draw a quest card to see what our quest is for the game. Fetch me that book. There's three treasure and or objective tokens in play, which we have. Each time your models search a treasure token or control an objective, they may take an intelligence attribute test to search for the book. The same token may not be searched in this way more than once past one of these tests to complete the quest. 
pool and VP. All right. Dragonborn sprints up, performs a hide action as he, as she makes her way over to, I think she's going to be trying to go for this objective marker as well as this um, Draugr, maybe get the sneak attack in on him. Um, this guy's going to be a pain. And uh, his intelligence, or yeah, his intelligence is higher than two. So turn luster and dead, not going to work on him. The skeleton archer moved up from over here to try to attack, but there is no one in clear line of sight or range. So he will end his movement there. The Imperial Battle Mage moves up close to the Dragonborn and throws up a ready token. If the Overlord comes within six inches, she will get a free ranged attack off on him, which um, he probably will. On the Draugr's turn, um, the Overlord actually did not go. Instead, it was this Draugr here. I have only two adversary activations at my point limit, and so this Draugr rolled objective, so he will stay there and throw up a block. Two-handed block, but a block's a block. Will not help him when knives come through him from the dark. That's the end of the battle round, so we will draw an event card. What do we got? Ancient Riddles, place a puzzle objective token on the gaming area no closer than 8 inches to any player controlled model. If possible, place as far away as possible otherwise. So, puzzle marker. Hmm, interesting. I place the puzzle token outside of 8 inches of the Imperial Mage. So, she'll be able to run over there next turn and. Hopefully solve that. Also, we have a new skeleton that has just spawned on the battle edge. Um, only one adversary spawned, thank God. Let's uh, see what happens when we go into turn two. Beginning of turn two, the Draugr have the advantage. Um, this guy ran all the way from over there. And threw up his block, because the only one he can see is the Imperial Mage. Um, not close enough to the Dragonborn to uh, search to see if she is there, but hey, he's closer. Maybe I can uh, get my first victory point. My bad. Uh, the Draugr will actually try to detect the Dragonborn. Um, six inches is only for a bonus. So intelligence check, uh, which fails, because he needs... A one. Beginning of Dragonborn's activation, she moved up just a hair, and she's going to throw a throwing knife at the Draugr while hidden. Uh, this is strength plus three inches range, uh, which is eight total. She has a strength of five. So, she, the, so the Draugr is well within range, and she's going to make an attack, adding a yellow for a sneak attack. Ooh, dropping dice. Um, six minus one is five, not enough to hit. Misses, unfortunately. So the Dragonborn may have gotten a little too greedy, got up a little too close. Um, so I am now within six inches of that Draugr, and she now must make a sneak skill test on a four. Uh, she passes. So she is still hidden. The Skeleton Archer moves up and kind of tucks itself behind cover. The Imperial Battle Mage moves up to solve the puzzle test, or the puzzle objective, and she will solve it on a four. Seven, that does not, that, that's not how that goes. <laughs> you didn't solve it. And that is the end of round two, so let's see what event we get. There we go. Disease. Choose one of your models. That model must pass an endurance attribute test or receive a disease diminishing effect card. Well, um, endurance. I think I'll, I think I'll have to go with the dragon one. Endurance attribute test. 
succeeds. She is not diseased. Those two adversaries have spawned in at the end of turn two. Start of turn three now. Uh, Dragonborn moves around outside of six inches this time, so as to not trigger this guy, and so he cannot see her at the end of her activation, or at the end of her action. So she is going to, once again, try to throw a knife into that Draugr and kill him dead again. Six minus two, that is a four. That passes. Four damage against the Draugr. Jogger has an armor rating of one, and so he cannot pass that, no matter what. And the Dragonborn must now make an agility test, or a sneak skill te test, to see if she's still stealth. Um, no, she is definitely not. That was the loudest, whoops, the loudest dagger thrown and death cry from the Jogger in the world. And then this skeleton moves around, seeing his fallen companion fall. Um, he moves around and goes to investigate a little bit. Uh, however, he cannot see the Dragonborn at all, because the Dragonborn is not within any sort of line of sight. Completely hidden. Hooray! The Imperial Mage will attempt to do the puzzle again. So let's hope for a win. That is a critical miss. Oh boy, um, so I resolve the potion effect first, I believe, and then I draw a trap. Great. A bear trap. Wonderful. Two yellow dice against the Imperial Mage. Oof, helmet. That's another yellow, and it's poison health. Gross, three damage. The Imperial Mage has a chance to block, I think, all of this. She doesn't need to block most of it. She blocks two, so she will take one, but she is affected by the health poison. Unfortunate. So since the poison was just added on at the and she hasn't had it at the start of the activation, she will not take poison damage this round, but she'll go ahead and ready. In action just in case the Draugr Overlord decides to come stomping his way over here. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have used the Imperial Luck to uh, succeed on that test. Oops. <laughs> and then this archer moves away from behind the Draugr Overlord and around to cover. And with that, that is the end of the battle round, and we shall draw an event card. We get evasive maneuvers. You may choose one of your models engaged with an enemy. A model immediately moves up to three inches and may move through other models. Um, there is no eligible model drawn to the card. So we shall do that. We shall get calm before the storm. If the blizzard rolls are in effect, which they are, I've been forgetting to roll for those. Oops. They cease until the end of the next round. Okay, if neither the darkness nor blizzard rules are in effect, use the blizzard rules from the start of the next round onwards. I've been forgetting to roll for blizzard, but it stops for this next round. And then comes back. Well, okay. We are almost halfway through and have not searched a single chest. Nor have I gotten to an objective. This is uh, not looking so great. Moving on to round four, start of the adversary's activation. End of the round. Uh, these two Draugr have spawned in. In the start of the round, this Draugr on the battle edge had moved over and threw up a block. Dragonborn comes over and will aid the Imperial Mage. That way she doesn't have to deal with that token. And uh, I can't block, so I guess she will sit there. I am not doing good. This Draugr in the back corner moves up and decides that it wants to defend this objective and throws up a block. 
learning her lesson after the first time, she is going to, uh, the Imperial Battle Mage, she is going to uh, roll a one on the skill die to successfully get that, giving us three VP. We are now at a total of five and drawing the treasure, a regular treasure. The treasure she drew was the Ancient Nord Battle Axe of Frost. Green, black, red, red. Huh. Cumbersome, enchanted, two-handed block. Um, unfortunately, the Dragonborn does not get a, does not have two-handed attack, but since she is of the Path of Might, she can equip the Nord Ancient the Ancient Nord Battle Axe of Frost, um, she just cannot boost. Which, on a green, red, red, I think that's worth it. So the Imperial Event Mage is going to spend an action to, I forget what it's called, but she moves things around, giving the thing to the Dragonborn. The Dragonborn now has two-handed axe. At the end of turn four, things are not looking great for the Dragonborn party. Um, I still need five VP. I can spend five to level someone up, um, but I haven't even touched any of the treasures. And in order to get to the treasures, things are going to look pretty scary. Um, I can kill adversaries, but I would have to kill six. Well, I guess there are objectives I could potentially do. Hmm. All right, end of the event, or end of the round, we'll do the event card. Ooh. We have the voice. Your party must include at least one model with the Dragon Shouts keyword. Do damage and or inflict status effects on enemy models at least three times. I don't have shouts. So I guess that's an effect, but I can't get it, so I'm just going to toss it out. And all the adversaries are on the table, so nothing spawns. Great. Beginning of the round, we'll see if there is a blizzard, now that I'm remembering that. Uh, no, everything's the same. Alright, start of the Draugr activation phase. This skeleton had uh, moved around and is going to flank and shoot the Dragonborn in the back. It is a range of more than eight. So let's see what they do. Seven, not gonna cut it. All right, the Dragonborn and the Imperial Mage, while they were together, they both spoke. They both decided that in order for them to win, they would have to divide and conquer. Um, Cause if they don't get all the chests, that's minus one VP. And those chests are kind of all over the place. So the Dragonborn came down here to smack this pesky skeleton, and the Imperial Mage is planning to go around here to shoot that one. And then after that, hopefully they can start taking some of these objectives. So first, Dragonborn, move over, slap the skeleton, see what we do. Critical fail! That's exactly what I wanted to see. Oh no! This Draugr over here sees what the uh, Dragonborn planning on doing and comes over here to guard this objective making sure that no one can take it forgot to mention that this guy also threw up a two-handed block the imperial battle mage comes around and is going to shoot flames at the skeleton archer and boosting once and with the um, destruction mastery perk she gets a green die an accuracy die which doesn't help Oh god, everything's falling apart! The skeleton now activates, shooting into the Imperial Mage that has um, gone out of cover. Critical fails though, whew! Arrow just zips on by. That is the end of turn 5, so we will draw an event card. Open ground, choose one of your models, that model adds Two inches to its basic movement allowance across open terrain until the end of its next activation. Hmm. Let me do some measuring. All right, I'm going to put the two inches on the Dragonborn. I'm hoping she can kill the skeleton and then move all the way up here into 
um, base to base with this guy. She can actually move to that chest if she needs to, which I think I will need her to. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We also have the fetch me that book. So if she searches, if she searches that chest, I could potentially get a victory point just from uh, searching a chest, which would help counteract the three I'm going to lose or the one I'm going to lose. So uh, beginning of the turn, beginning of turn six, see what happens. Nothing. Blizzard is calm. So I think to start off, we will need the Dragonborn to kill the Skeleton and then move over. Because uh, this is, we have a, um, a priority, advantage, something like that. So smack the Skeleton, please. Critical miss again. I hate this game sometimes. Oh, it was going to be a two. And then the little divot. Oh, this is. <sighs> okay. I think she's falling back. I think I need to get over there. She's falling back. Sprinting, falling back. Yeah, that's it. All right, so since the Dragonborn is withdrawing, the Skeleton gets a free punch on her. Not much. Um, it's a fail, so she's going to move her 11 inches? Not a full 11 inches, um, but that does get us where we need to go. And since we are within three of this objective, we get to see what it is. It's another puzzle. That is interesting. I was honestly hoping for strategic, but that could get us another three victory points if I kill that Draugr, which he is going to activate, and he will... Oh yeah, I guess I should probably roll hot. This is the moment this Draugr was waiting for, to smash in the face of a foolish adventurer. Draugr attacks the Dragonborn um, on a five, misses. Wait, helmet does nothing. Piercing one. We're good. Survives. Strangely enough. So I did forget to roll the power attack for the Draugr, but that doesn't matter. Um, and the Draugr Overlord's over here. So that's going to be very, very, very painful. Because he gets a green die. Green die for um, outnumbering. He's got a red and a yellow for attack, and then his normal, and then a flat roll. This is, this is, ouch, this is pain. Uh, piercing two. Oh, oh my. My bad, I re-rolled, or I rolled the wrong die. I was rolling for the, uh, I was rolling for the shout attack, not the regular attack. So he will actually get another green and a yellow. Um, which becomes punishing. Two damage. Um, Dragonborn blocks on a yellow. Oh! 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 Yes! Thank you! I could kiss you! So the Imperial Mage, she moves over here to the chest and will attempt to search it. It is locked. Well, that's, that's unfortunate. Um, I believe she just needs a crit to break the lock, because that's the only thing I can do on a strength 3, complexity 2, I need a 1, so a crit. 10 is not a crit. Uh, and then the, uh, the skeleton will activate. Skeleton shoots at the mage. Critical fail. I like that. And then this skeleton fell back. Or moved, whatever it is. All right, and uh, so that's the end of the round. Should not draw an event card. Hunter and hunted. Place three NPC tokens as close to the center of the board as possible, but no closer than six inches to each other. These are the trapped hunters. They may not interact. They may not be interacted by with by any model. God, I can't read that is not in your party. Perform the aid action targeting each token to rescue the hunter and remove the token from play. One VP per hunter rescued. This, this might, this might save us. At the end of the turn, I'm also going to level up the Dragonborn. 
Um, since she is up against the Overlord and the Draugr, a skeleton might pose a problem as well. So I leveled her up for the uh, Banish the Wicked upgrade. Um, instead of just a yellow, it's now a green and a yellow. So that way in that fight, she will uh, do much, much better. All right, so we will move on to the beginning of turn seven. All right, beginning of turn seven, I moved the um, battle mage from that chest over there. She hobbled over the wall and is now going to see what this is. A master chest. Interesting, interesting, interesting. To be honest, I was hoping it was a strategic objective, but that's okay. Let's see if it's locked. It is not locked. Uh, she does have to roll, I believe, to see if it is... No! So, exclamation mark. That is a master treasure and a treasure. So let's see what we get. The Shield of Solitude. Sorry. It's getting dark, so the uh, light up top has a bit of a glare on the sleeves. Uh, block boost for a green and a red. Special user gain resistance magic while equipped. Interesting. And then the normal treasure for the exclamation point is the bow of the hunt. Yeah, I like it. I don't have any beast adversaries yet. Um, so that's not exactly going to help. I believe that gives me some victory points. Let me double check on that. So that is two VP for the uh, for the master chest, but uh, I misread. It's you only get the extra treasure if you are attempting a locked chest thing. So no go on that. But however, I do still have my quest: searching a treasure token or control an objective. I'm not 100% sure if the treasure token is for um, just normal treasure tokens or master treasure tokens, but we're gonna we're gonna take the intelligence check. Uh, it doesn't pass, so it doesn't matter anyway. All right, so that is her activation. Uh, a bunch of adversaries. These two are going to probably shoot her down. Let's move on to the adversary's reaction. The skeleton moved over into uh, some cover and is going to shoot into the back of the Imperial Mage, boosting um, for one damage, and that is piercing one. Imperial Mage has a red die. I need a two. And she's still alive! Now the question is, can she survive two bow shots in a row? The second skeleton is going to uh, shoot into her side, into her flank. Same attack. Uh, that misses. Oh my god. We might win this yet. The Draugr soldier here is going to attack into the Dragonborn. Since he has not moved, has not boosted, he gets a yellow die for his power attack. And that is a 6 into a 4. That barely misses. Unfortunately, I forgot another green die for flanking. Uh, with the helmet is also piercing one. That's four damage, piercing one. Oof. That doesn't look so good. Yellow die for block. Blocks one. So she takes three. That puts the dragonborn down to two, and that's... That hurts. All right, Dragonborn is uh, going to actually attack the Draugr Overlord. I think if I have any chance of winning, the Draugr Overlord needs to die. Because he is about to smack her for, I think, uh, two yellow and a green. Yeah, so we've got two red and a green for the um, Enchanted Axe. A yellow and a green for her... Um, extra damage against undead and whatnot, banish the wicked ability. And since the weapon is cumbersome, for two stamina, I get a red die for a power attack. 
All I need is for this weapon to not do bleed and not do frost. Um, bleed actually doesn't matter. Frost, if it's frosty, gets extra damage or extra defense. So I just want, I just want high damage. Just give me high damage. Lots of high damage. Three hits. Okay. Okay. So here's how we do this. How much damage is that? One, two, three, four. He has four wounds. He can has a block of two. If I get the extra yellow die for Frost, he gets a red die to his armor. And I don't want that. Because he has a chance of completely rolling blanks on all of his dice. So I think I'm going to choose the bleed effect. And then he will roll his defense. He saves almost all of it. Wow. This guy's tough. <laughs> Alright, Drug Overlord fighting back. I threw up a block on the... on the uh, Dragonborn, because she will need it. Three yellow, or two yellow and a green for the weapon. Yellow because they always power attack. And hopefully you whiff. Oh god, you hit for three, and it's piercing one. I have to roll a two to survive. All right. This is unfortunate. Oh, I roll a two! She only takes one point of damage. She's alive! Oh, wait. I have a two and a block. I can block more. Oh, retconning, retconning. I don't want to take any if I have to. Um, that is a critical fail, but she does restore health. So she will only take... She goes back up to three and then takes two. Takes one, yeah. Up to three, takes one. The math is there, I think. <laughs> Alright, this is where things get deadly. The Draugr that was guarding that objective over there has moved down the battle mage. He's attacking. He had a boost to get there, so no power attack, and he misses! Yes, we're still alive! <laughs> Alright, so that is the end of the round. We shall draw an event card. What does this one say? Ah, oh, get the shadow in there. There we go. What was that? If the adversary rules are in effect, choose a point on the gaming area within six inches of one of your models. The adversary spawns from that point instead of a table edge. Um, that doesn't matter. Alright, beginning of turn 8, we see if there's a snow... Snow blizzard? No. No, there's not. Uh, I know I forgot to show it last turn, but there wasn't. There wasn't, I promise. Trust me, trust me. Alright, so I think the only way we can win this, unfortunately adversaries will go first, is she can make it all the way to that objective. That objective needs to be a strategic objective. If I can take that objective and kill a skeleton, that skeleton, kill that draugr, and maybe if I find the book, if I can't do either of the, kill either of the two draugrs, then we will win. It'll be a minor victory, but we would have won. Otherwise, otherwise we lose. All right, so let's go and do uh, adversary activation. This is where my hopes are dashed upon the rocks. This advers this Draugr warrior activates and his power attacking on a four. Oh. <gasps> Wait, she's alive! No green dice can be added. She's alive! I forgot to mention earlier after he had activated last turn, he threw up a block. And he threw up a block after he attacked. So, she managed to come around here. Um, he is actually not within six inches, um, but he still is, but he can't activate. So she'll have to hit him with the... Uh, magical attack, uh, flames I think I have, 
but we are within three inches of this, so we reveal it. Oh my god, yes. Okay, there is hope. There is hope left in the battle. These adventurers can still pull it off. Uh, so she, the um, Imperial Mage, is going to attack into this Draugr that just attacked her. Putting all of her Magicka points into the attack that she can. Alright, so a yellow for the damage, two yellow for two boosts, and a green for destruction mastery. She has to hit, and she fails. Critical failure. She does not kill that Draugr. So the best we are going to hope for is losing by one point. Oh wait, she gets, um, it doesn't say this requires an action. So she will take an intelligence attribute test to see if she finds the book. Critical fail. She will heal back to full though. Not that that matters. Well, that is, that is unfortunate. All right, moving on to next adversary activation. All the adversaries are out for blood. This Draugr here is attacking the Dragonborn, boosting into a power attack. And, oh no, that, that will hit. That will hit. I forgot I already spent my block action on the Draugr um, Overlord, so all I get now is a flat roll. Helmet into another yellow. Blocks all of it? We may win yet. So here's what we're looking at the final turn. Um, we only have the dragon one left to activate. The adversaries have already all activated that they can, um, except for reactions. The Dragonborn, we have seven victory points. The only thing that we can do, we'll get two more from that strategic objective that'll put us up to nine. Killing an adversary will not give us enough because we're going to be losing a VP at the end of the game for not searching all the chests. So the only thing that I have left to do that could possibly win us this game is to take this puzzle objective and clear it. Um, yeah, because killing an adversary or taking picking up one of the uh, civilians, that won't matter. So we are going to move around here. It's a boost into the puzzle objective. The Draugr Overlord will activate, but we need to make an intelligence check. Our intelligence is not very high. It's a three. Oh my god. <laughs> yes! That is victory for the adventurers. The game is not yet over. First we take our treasure card, which is... The Ancient Nord War Axe. Green, red, bleeding and punishing. It's nice. Um, so we got our two VP that we needed. And that puts us up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, before the end of the turn, this guy here is going to activate. And on that, he is going to move over here to the Dragonborn. And he is going to try to put her down once and for all. So I realized that uh, the, the adversaries, I forget that the adversaries take, whenever they get the attack characteristic, they start with their top priority which for him is his shout. Um, so he wouldn't charge up to someone. He would want people to charge up to him. So he's actually going to use the Fus Roda shout on the Dragonborn from there to try to get her out. Um, I don't believe he can boost this. It doesn't say. Um, so I'm just going to say he can't boost it. Um, so it's just a flat red and yellow. Let's see what he gets. Eight does not clear it. So he fails that. He does not kill the dragonborn. End of the turn. There are two VP 
that we get from controlling that strategic objective. That puts us up to um, 11. No, I can't count. That puts us up to 12. We lose a VP for not having all the tres treasure chests cleared. That puts us down to 11. And this, this is the end of the battle. And the dead shall slumber. So at 140 gold septums, we got 11 victory points. A narrow victory, barely achieved for the adventurers. Um, I think I, there are several things I probably could have done a lot better. Um, so, For example, instead of staying around here and, I mean, forgetting the thing I could have done with her um, on the puzzle test, I could have just cleared that in turn one and then they could have started pushing up. But that, that obviously didn't happen. Um, missing my first sneak attack, I mean, I can't, I can't fix that. I think I should have been more aggressive trying to take the chest like I was, like I made an oath to, but um, that's not, that's not how I played. But hey, it's a victory. We won. And uh, that's, a, that's good in my book. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for joining me for this Call to Arms, Elder Scrolls Call to Arms Battle Report Delve. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Remember to uh, protect your treasure, keep them away from pesky adventures, and I'll see you guys next time.